I am Dr. Peter Hill. I'm a chiropractor in Weston. Um, I've been in practice for 25 years. Uh, I spent 25 years in Boston, in the south end of Boston. I recently opened up full-time in Weston. Today I'm giving a talk on about the anterior cruciate ligament and the ACL as it's known and how to prevent injury to your ACL and what to do if you do get an injury and whether you should if you can have conservative treatment or not, depending on your injury. So why don't we get started. So what we're going to talk about is, again, ACL injuries. What are they and can they be prevented? So who gets injured? So basically when we run, we jump, and cut without thinking, the body, the nervous system really coordinates everything. You, you, your, your brain, your spinal cord, it coordinates all the activity of your body, your, your, where you stand in position, and where you stand in, and how you land, cut, and turn for your knee. Only maybe one in a million run, jump, cuts will re result in a tear to your anterior cruciate ligament. And usually if you do tear it, it's near the top at the, the insertion of, of your femur. Now, your leg is comprised of your, of, of your thigh bone, which is the femur, and then you have the shin bone, which is the tibia, which is the two large bones. So really, the, your, your knee joint is made up of, of, of your thigh bone and your shin bone, and then your patella or your kneecap. So there's been a tremendous jump in injuries uh, of, of children, young adolescents for knees. There's been the ACL tears have increased 400% from 1999 to 2010. And the most recent jump has been from 2005 to 2010. And this has really been evident in all groups. And there are many possible causes. There's more intense competition. There's more year-round training. For instance, there's summer sports and winter sports and spring sports and fall sports. And a lot of times, children are not getting, and adolescents and teens are not getting the time to really rest their body as they've done in the past. It makes them more prone to injury. Um, the other thing is there's a lot, of been a lot of increased diagnosis, referrals, and there's more aggressive treatments because it's very important. Very often, we want to be a very active society and for kids to get back on their feet and get back into activity. The a ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, it's estimated there are about 100,000 injuries per year. It costs about $1.7 billion to treat all those injuries. There are both short-term and long-term consequences to it, and it's much more common in females. It's been estimated to be two to eight times greater risk. And we'll talk a little bit about why women are at greater risk for ACL injuries compared to, to male athletes. What causes an ACL injury? 70% um, believe it or not are non-contact. That means no one's run into you, no one's tackled you. You've done it all by yourself. And there's sometimes people are all alone on the field and they've torn their ACL. So usually it occurs towards the end of the day when people are tired, when athletes are tired. Um, so what, what's also recommended is that you try to recommend that they don't run down a hill at the end of the day when they're tired because it makes it much more likely to be prone to tear their ACL. Uh, body position is paramount. Understanding where the body is in space, where your knee and your hips are in space. So when does the ACL tear? It tears when your hip is straight, when your leg is straight, and when you land flat-footed. That's what the odds are. Because what happens is when you do that, you're not engaging all the muscles and ligaments of the body. The body is not really prepared. Even if you just land with a slight bend in your knee, you're engaging the muscles, the ligaments, the collateral ligaments, and the ACL and the post-ACL in a, in a fashion that allows it to work and prevent the rotational tear. So what causes the ACL to tear? It's valgus stress which is a lateral stress on the knee with torsional rotational component. So it's a lateral and a rotation of the knee. So one of the things you can do to see if your child is at risk, and I'll just demonstrate it, is have your child jump off a chair. And I'll do that now. So what you'll do is you have your child get up on a chair. And they'll stand in a neutral position. And then you're going to ask them to jump down. So they jump down, and their knees go inward. 
on their landing, your child's more at risk. So what you want to do is make sure you, that the child understands and you watch what they do to tell them is to land so the knees don't bend in, don't bow in. Just land and come straight down. And that's really a little bit when they're going to be landing is how it's really important for them to be aware of their body position. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of the knee. <clears throat> so there, the normal knee, you have a kneecap, which is your patella, which is your kneecap, your femur or your thigh bone, as I said, your tibia, which is in the lower leg, which is on the inside of, of the leg, your fibula, which is not really part of the knee, but does attach the lateral collateral ligaments on the, the side portion, the lateral portion of your leg. Then you have the articular cartilage and the meniscus, which they are the shock absorbers for the knee. And the articular cartilage run along the, the inside of the patella, which is your kneecap. It runs at the base of your femur, just at the very bottom of your femur, and at the very top of your tibia. And those act as little like cushions when you jump and fall. And those have to really be intact to protect the body. So the anterior cruciate ligament connects the femur, the thigh bone, the tibia, the shin bone, and prevents the tibia from shift sliding forwards beneath the femur and provides stability to the knee. Tearing of the ACL can occur when the bones twist in opposite directions during an impact such as landing from a jump. So the anterior, they give you the anterior cruciate ligament, which goes from the middle of, of your femur to your tibia, and then your posterior cruciate ligament which runs the opposite direction from the back. And so the anterior cruciate ligament prevents forward motion of, the, of your thigh bone over your tibia. And the function of the knee is to cut and pivot. Both the, the knee is both form and function to control performance of your knee. It is a load-bearing joint, so it carries your weight. It acts to distribute loads. Um, and has, its ligaments tighten the knee, so ligaments attach bone to bone. So your anterior cruciate ligament attaches your femur, your thigh bone, to your tibia, your shin bone. It attaches bone to bone. And the meniscus, as I said, distribute forces. And the meniscus are the, is the cushion that you see over here. Kinematic function of the knee, the ACL prevents anterior, which is called forward motion of the knee, and the forward motion of the knee over the femur. The ACL acts to keep the knee stable as one lands on the ground. It's sort of like a very taut rubber band that protects you from having a lot of motion. So what are some of the other risks that, that cause you to maybe tear your ACL? And the questions are, does, does whether you play on a grass field or if you play on an artificial turf, does that matter? The research shows it doesn't matter. Um, whether you wear a different type of shoe, whether it be Nike, Reebok, with cleats, without cleats, that research shows doesn't matter. What, believe it or not, they've shown, and it's still not 100%, but there is some indication that the time of the hormone cycle of a, of a woman does matter. So recent studies show that there are more ACL tears at the very beginning of a woman's menstrual cycle. So if you have a young athlete and she's at the very beginning of her menstrual cycle, you just may want to make her more aware to be more aware of her body position when she goes out to play soccer or field hockey or lacrosse, just to be more aware of her body. The other thing that matters is something called the Q angle. And the Q angle is an important predictor of biomechanical abnormality. Normal ranges are 18 to 22 degrees, and women are at a high range do that they have a wider pelvis. Now, the way you would measure the Q angle is if you touch your, your, your pelvis, you can feel a little bone over here. It's called the anterior superior iliac spine, and then your kneecap. And you draw a line that goes from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the kneecap. Then you have another line. There's something called the tibial tuberosity, which is a bump just below the kneecap. And you draw another line from there to that kneecap going up. That angle shouldn't be greater than 22 degrees. If your child has an angle that's greater than 22 degrees, they're more at risk for tearing their, their ACL.